Good morning. Oh, I've got a little friend with me. Oh my God, he's so heavy, honestly. And as I've become an old man, he can see himself. He's got heavier and heavier, haven't you? Hey, you are beautiful. He's beautiful, but he's an absolute pain to be honest. Off you go. Oh, right, I'm just off to an appointment actually. So I thought I'd do a quick video catch up before I go. Um, okay, I've been up since quarter four this morning. So I got up, it was freezing cold. <laughs> it was like being back in the UK. It was really cold actually this morning. My hands are still cold. Although I've got the, the light streaming in the window now, which is lovely. And the only heating we've got is uh, an electric fire. We've just bought a big electric fire and it does warm up the room quite a lot. And sufficiently, should I say, not quite a lot because everything's open plant here and there's no insulation. So actually, yeah, it's still cold, but it takes the edge off it and that, that's fine. So anyway, I've been up since quarter to four. I wanted to get up to see the, um, the exit poll coming in from the UK. Uh, in that infamous election that, where am I? I was unable to vote in. Still got the papers there. So that's got me pretty angry, to be honest. And I, I've, been, I've been watching the news quite a lot about this. There's been other cases of postal ballots not turning up on time. Um, so, you know... I'm in Australia. Some friends uh, in Spain had the same issues and they were unable to vote. And it's just diabolical, really, because, you know, we have a right to vote. And people have said to me, well, why does it interest you? Why? Why? Why, why do you want to vote in an election that isn't really going to affect you? Well, there's a number of reasons, really. The first reason is I'm British and I'm allowed to vote. That's important. The second reason is I have pensions, investments and interests still in the UK. So it's so, so important for me to have my voice heard in any election, whether it's a general election or a local election or whatever. It's important. And the biggest area of concern for me is health care for my uh, aged father Stay aged, he'd probably smack me one for that. But as my father gets older, nobody knows what's going to happen. But I want to, to know that he will have the best care possible. And I feel that a Labour government would be able to offer that. I'll go into that a little bit later. So I have a vested interest in voting in British elections, and it's very, very, very important for me to do that. So not being able to vote was an absolute travesty for me and it was quite upsetting and I have made my voice even clearer about that so I've contacted the local council etc etc so it does look however just looking at the turnout it's quite a low turnout in this election which surprises me because the Tory party that have been in power for the last 14 years have been bloody awful with respect i don't think i've ever known such a shoddy bunch of liars in all my life five prime ministers five and each one of those was worse than the other apart from liz truss who was probably the probably the worst prime minister in living memory ever well ever who lasted for, what, 49 days, I think it was? I mean, what a nightmare government. Really, nightmare. Um, so in that respect, I'm glad to be out of the UK and, you know, people probably turn around and say, well, good riddance. So, I mean, I'm just doing another declaration now, whoever that may be. I'm not sure. Anyway, I'm literally so engrossed in this type of thing. Let me take you back a bit. When I was a child, my father was a political activist. So he stood in local elections 
I think he stood in a national election as well, but it was mainly local elections. Now, as a family, we lived in True Blue, Fareham, Titchfield, Castlefield, that sort of area. There was no chance ever of a Labour MP or even local councillor being elected. So for people like my dad, he was, he was, it was in his soul to be a socialist, a, a Labour man. And having spoken to my father over these past six weeks of the campaign in the UK, he's been doing his bit. I mean, he's, he's not as mobile as he used to be, but he's, he's been on his, um, what do you call it, stand uh, in the middle of Fairham Town Centre or Whiteley Town Centre, and he's been handing out leaflets and, you know, just doing what he can for the, the party, which is great, you know, for my dad... You know, since my mum died, you know, I think politics is and will always remain his biggest interest, you know. He's lucky to have um, mum's family around him as well, obviously. They were always true blue, so <laughs> that was always a source of contention. Um, but, you know, hey ho. I, I, I've got conservative friends as well, and, you know, I, I don't choose my friends for their political affiliation. I actually like the fact I have Tory friends because... Um, <laughs> they make me feel no. I was going to say they make me feel better about myself, but that's untrue, and I don't mean that. It it it, it adds that spice and variety, especially with conversations, etc. You know, and some people have a right to be a Tory. I'm not sure working class people really have a right to be Tory, because it's conservatism isn't really a, a working class um, party. So it's not group, movement. Conservatism it really isn't designed to be helping the working class. It's it's just not. It's that trickle-down effect and you might get a bit at the bottom if you're lucky. So my my politics or my interest in politics goes back to yeah childhood. And I even remember going to uh, a local, not a local, a, was it a national count? I went with my father? I can't remember. Um, but I went to a count at Fernham Hall when they were counting the results and I, and I was stood there with my red rose hat on and in support of my father, uh, chatting away to the local Tory candidate, actually, who, who was lovely. But I think this must have been late 80s and, you know, the, the Tory party then was very different to now. I, I, find, I find the Conservative Party now has gone so far to the right. It's untrue. It's become racist, homophobic, misogynistic, etc. Now that sounds odd because so many people in the uh, Conservative cabinet are black, you know, people of colour. But it is right wing. It's it's just unbelievable. I I see. I don't. I mean, maybe you readers, listeners to to my blog vlog can sort of enlighten me why um, a person like Rishi Sunak, who is a product of um, an immigrant family, why he is so racist, why he is so anti-immigration. And I'm not talking, look, illegal immigration is a scourge and it needs to be sorted. It really does. And I, this, is, this is where I agree. But he talks about immigrants in such a bad light that they're all inherently bad, horrible people, and they're not. You know, they're trying to do the best for their families, as as we all are. And you know, I I do find it hard listening to um, racist speech. I really do. So I'm just catching up. Can't keep my eyes off it, you see. Um. So, yeah, I really do find the, the rhetoric and, and the nastiness really, oh, it's low. It really is low. And I think it also appeals to a certain class of voter. And it's usually an uneducated class of voter. And again, I'm going to get my throat ripped out for saying this. But they are mainly in red wall seats in the UK. And they are mainly uneducated Labour voters. They are. And it's quite simple. An educated person, in my view, would not vote for the politics of racism. They would not do it. The politics of homophobia. 
And the prime example of this is Reform, who, are they a virgining group? I suppose they are. I mean, th th this group didn't exist before this election. I think they sort of, I suppose they took over from the Brexit party. And, you know, candidates have had to be stood down because of their views and, and they were particularly nasty and horrible um, towards all sectors of the community. And people are voting for this. You know, the first set of results I've seen, um, and I think, you know, you, you're approaching like, two o'clock in the morning there and th there's a few North of England results that have come through show that reform are in second place to Labour and Labour's share of the vote in these places has gone down and this just shows the type of person voting it's it's it shocks me it really does as, as a person I, I I like everyone I really do I have my own personal views um, about certain sectors of society, people who treat, especially gay people like myself, with such disdain. Um, but one would hope that their views are, are not, you know, across the board. But it seems, you know, big swathes of the UK are homophobic. And that's upsetting. And it makes me glad to be away from it. And I know when I moved to Spain in 2018, I was glad to be away from it. And, you know, Spain is a hell of a lot more accepting, actually, of gay people. And so far, my experience in Australia has been far more accepting. So that's good. Um, so I'm going to go to my appointment. I'm going to get that out of the way. And then I'm going to... God knows how long that's going to take. I've got my phone, so I'm going to be listening to the results as they come in. And, uh, and then when I get back, I'm going to finish watching this marathon um, election coverage. This is an important election. It's an important election for many reasons. It's important to get rid of the Conservative government. They have to go. Their time is up and they are out on their ear. And it's about time. You know, people should have chucked them out long ago. They have destroyed the fabric of Britain. The Brexit lie that people like me voted for believing their rhetoric was indeed an absolute distruth. They told, they were dishonest. They didn't tell the truth. If there was a Brexit vote today, it would never pass. It really wouldn't. And the biggest mistake I think we, we did as a nation was getting out of Europe. Point of fact, I want to be able to retire to Europe when I'm older. Am I, able, am I going to be able to do that? I don't know. But I think my chances of it happening under a Labour government are better than a right-wing, nationalist, conservative government. The odd thing is, the rest of Europe is going further to the right and Labour seems to be going further to the left. But the undercurrents in Britain is still very right-wing and reform shows that. These are really dangerous times, especially for gay people and minorities. And I think as a group, we all need to stand together and stop the kind of behaviours that marginalise people for who they are, just for who they are, whether it's the colour of their skin, their sexuality or whatever. And that cannot be allowed to continue. I'm wearing my red hoodie today. That's for my father's benefit, bless him. And I'm sure he would appreciate that. I'm not that die of the war socialist, not my father. He knows that, which is why we have some great telephone conversations. But this is one time I agree with him entirely that yes, it's time for a change of government. And it looks like it looks like that change has come and I couldn't be happier. So whatever you're doing, have a wonderful day. I'm off and I shall be back to watch this when I get back. So lots of love. Ciao.